car game of the 80s by far, responsible for so many things, especially in my life, including the purchase of this car right here behind me. My £16,000 Ratty Ferrari Testarossa Spider, otherwise affectionately known as the Rattarossa. But could my hours of playing Outrun in my youth actually have done me the biggest favour of all. By buying this Ferrari, have I somehow stumbled upon a diamond in the rough? Could this car potentially be worth a million? Naturally, you think I'm joking. Well, normally I would be, but there's some rather strange things going on in the Testarossa market right now. The Testarossa spider market, to be precise. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Currently in Europe, we have three very interesting Testarossas up for grabs. This is the first of them. It is a 1988, low mileage, 3,980 kilometers to be precise, Testarossa with a conversion at some point, done to a very high standard, I will add. The interesting thing about this car is this bit right here, 980,000 euros. That is the first of three. And this is the second Testarossa Spider up for sale at the moment. This is a 1986, 24,000 kilometer car. So again, same as mine, a mono dado. Have a look at the pictures on this one. So the roof looks like it is some kind of hard top folding roof on it. Retains more or less the same kind of lines as the original roof on the uh, coupe. Quite funky how they've done this. Personally, I'm not keen on that view there, but it is done very well. They've retrimmed all the interior. But the main thing on this one, again, is this number over here. A million euros is the asking price on this one. And well, like I say, it's the same car as mine. Now this third car is a rather special one. It's a unique one indeed, and it's up for auction this weekend at RM Sotheby's in London. I've got to say a massive thanks to Sotheby's for allowing me to use that footage you saw at the beginning of this video. It's of this car produced by them, and it's the uh, Outrun sketch, which brought back so many great memories and the reason why I wanted a Testarossa Spider so badly in the first place. This car, like I say, is going to auction. It's a very unique one. It was built by Pininfarina. It's a 1990 production car. The parts were supplied by Ferrari. And well, it's unique in several ways. Number one, it's never been registered. It's just got 413 kilometers on the clock. It's also been subject to a very expensive restoration. This car is going to auction with a guide price of 1.4 million to 1.8 million pounds. Let's see what that achieves. I'm going to be uh, watching that like a hawk. I might even try and go up to London this weekend and see this one go through because I'm extremely interested in this car. Now Ferrari only ever built one official Testarossa Spider at factory and I'll show you that in just a second. But right now, the question on my mind is, could this £16,000 ratty Testarossa Spider of mine ever be worth anywhere close to a million? Well, let's grab a cup of tea and find out. Here's your tea, but why did you want me to make it in this Lord mug? Hey, thanks darling. Let me tell you a wee story. When I was a wee lad, I used to roam the bonny lands of Scotland, home to the Chivers clan for many a generation, until one day I rode a wee bit too far on my prancing horse and ended up here. But now, once again, thanks to established titles, Rattle Rossa is once again Lord of the Land. I can do things like change my credit card, my membership card or book tickets in the name of Lord Chevers. It makes a great fun novel gift for friends and family alike. They even do couple packs. But the best part is established titles is a fun and novel way to help preserve the natural woodland of Scotland while also helping global deforestation efforts. They work with global charities, one tree planted and trees for the future and plant a tree for every order placed. Established Titles is actually running a massive sale right now. Plus, if you use code RATTAROSSA, you get an extra 10% off. Go to establishedtitles.com slash RATTAROSSA to get your gift and help support the channel. And get this, the first 200 people purchasing a title pack using my link will effectively be next to my plot within a few minutes walking distance. So let's be a lord and lady neighbors. And now my lovely lady Lexi, it's time for you to check out what I'm packing away under my kilt. Oh my word, that is the most enormous, most gigantic <gasps> screwdriver I've ever seen. Aye, it is. Cheers. Now I said Ferrari only officially ever built one genuine Testarossa Spider at factory. This car here, it was a special one-off build for the then head of Fiat Gianni Agnelli. 
beautiful car in a silver Argento paintwork with blue highlights and a contrasting blue leather interior. Uh, and a very interesting white hood there. Anyway, the car sold for 1.2 million euros back in 2016, around about the time I bought my car and had it imported from the US. But the question is, how much would I have to spend on my car to make it perfect once again? Let me give you a quick Testarossa education. So the Testarossa was built over a 12 year production span with three generations of Testarossa within that period. And that made it one of Ferrari's most successful models at the time, probably helped by the fact of things like Outrun and of course, Miami Vice. Launched in 1984, the first generation of Testarossa actually also had three facelifts in itself. The first cars were known as the Mono Specchio. Mono Specchio meaning the single mirrored cars with centre lock wheels. Then in 1986-87, they changed the cars to twin mirrors as this one is. Again though, retaining the centre lock wheels, which happened to be my favourite preference. Not the most expensive models, but certainly for me, the most pretty ones. And then around 1988, they changed that model again, retaining the two mirrors, but also changing the wheels to a five stud pattern. I had one of those cars, and well, they're lovely, but I just don't think they look as nice as the center lock wheel earlier model cars. In total, 7,177 of the first generation Tesla Rosses were actually built. Then in 1992, the second generation, the 512 TR, was launched. And well, Ferrari gave it a very nice facelift. They put more, let's say, 355 style wheels on it, changed a few things, but essentially it looked very similar to the original model car. 2,285 12TRs were built in total, and then the final generation three of the Testarossa was the F512M, which went all the way up until 1996, and only 501 of those cars were actually built, which makes them quite collectible now. But in total, Ferrari made over the three generations almost 10,000 Testarossas, which makes it quite high numbers in Ferrari terms. However, they only ever made one official Spider, the Gianni Agnelli car. All the others are aftermarket chops, with the kind of exception of the Pininfarina cars, which technically, well, they're a little bit more official than the homemade chops like this or the Strahman chops. But the obvious question here is, with three current Tethlerossa Spiders up for sale for a million plus, and the original Gianni Agnelli car having sold six years ago for 1.2 million euros, just how far away is this 16,000 pound rat rod Tethlerossa Spider? Could this one possibly be worth a million pound one day? Let's have a look around the car. So let's take a walk around my car and figure out how much it would really take to make this £16,000 ratty Testarossa into a million pound beauty. Well, for a start, let's look at some of the shot lines. Ferraris are not great to start with, but when you are looking at this car, well, <laughs> it really is shockingly bad. <laughs> uh, I like it, but if we're going to make this one good, it needs to be perfect. We got lots of problems with lines and gaps all over the place here. And then it slams up, it doesn't line up at the back here. So we would need to do a lot of work getting all the panels to line up and having a little bit of a play around with some of the hinges, for example. Same thing really on this bonnet. Look at the gap here, comes down here. Here we've got a massive gap on top of the headlight and then nothing, it literally, hits the bodywork here. Same on this side, and again, over here, it sits proud, it almost hits the uh, screen over here. So, lots and lots of work to do with lines. We've got splits in the uh, actual bodywork here, all the way along, look. 
I think that's just filler that's gone on top of it when uh, this car was obviously in some kind of accident to start with. And the same thing here with the uh, rear deck lid. Lots and lots of problems. So first of all would be sorting out all the bodywork, making that perfect. Then we are talking a very good respray on this car. So number one would be all the body gaps, sorting out all the panels, all the alignments. So ground up, just go through everything. Things like, for example, just the front grille there. All stuff that is actually doable. Nothing really is difficult there. So that's number one. And then we come to the interior on the car. Well, one of the reasons they did not put the Spider into production for the Testarossa was said to be the rigidity. They just couldn't get the flex correct on the body. Well, this one has had a lot of strengthening already added. And to be fair, it's quite a solid car. It's not bad compared to the Coupe, which I owned before. And well, the only thing really here would be just tidying up some of these welds, but it's not bad. The next thing was obviously gonna be retrimming the interior. Again, it's all original in here. So we've got things such as uh, all of the original steering wheel, all the switch gear, dash, everything, original colors. The dash was actually replaced. That was a new dash because the old one was so bad and I found that for 50 pounds. Then we've got the seats. They would all need doing, but again, it's all original Ferrari. Some aftermarket stuff that I uh, retrimmed with the roof line in here and here, that could all be tidied up, but it's all doable. There's nothing really bad there. Everything is correct. We've got a little bit missing here, but I can find that. So interior wise, it can be done. It's not really expensive. There are ways of doing it, as I showed you with the Stradale, which are much cheaper than going to the well-known guys who retrim them. But even if I did, what's the worst case scenario? Now, if we have a quick look inside the engine, open this one up. Then we come to the engine area, and this is where this little car is a bit of a gem. This engine is actually a low mileage, 16,400 miles, which in Ferrari Testarossa terms is really quite good. We do obviously need to do a little bit of work here, but the engine itself is solid. Clean up on this is really all it would need bit of service work then things like where the hoses were changed for uh, these blue hoses putting those back to original rehousing things like uh, the fuel to go into the flap here in the wing sorting all this out probably this is an empty box at the moment but in general it needs a tidy up here and then just sorting out things like this but then the idea here would be something like using the lid and having it to hydraulically lift so we have covered bodywork we've covered exterior we've covered engine but the final big one on this car is the complete lack of roof altogether. This can only really be used currently on guaranteed dry days, which is not gonna be the case today. Anyway, we would need to make some kind of roof structure on this car in order for it to be able to compete with any of the other ones. And that would be not too bad, I don't think. We could use something that Ferrari have already kind of made from a 355, a 348, or we could go the whole hog and make two generations of roof so we could have the folding one or we could have it where we've got a kind of Mercedes SL removable hard top as well. Anyway, it can all be done and well, it's just time and money and a bit of thought process. You so see from every angle, the Testarossa looks amazing as a spider, a convertible car. All the lines are just stunning. It suits it so well so why ferrari didn't actually make it into a convertible and put it in production well we'll never really know but just look how cool it looks at the back there just so square so wide it as a normal coupe they look menacing but as a roofless spider look at how big it looks at the back <laughs> anyway the car is fantastic i love driving this and obviously with no roof you get to really experience the sound of that sports exhaust at the back which completely changes the character of this car it makes it into an absolute monster so that is my 16,000 pound car and that's really what it would take to put it right but how much do you think that would cost i would love to know your thoughts in the comments below personally i think it could be done for sub a hundred thousand pounds that is maybe even less one thing on a Tesla roster you really, really do need to change, and that is the exhaust system. The stock muffler from Ferrari sounds terrible. 
you get into this glorious flat 12 engine car and it's such a letdown, such a disappointment. However, it's easily rectified by simply installing a sports exhaust. Wow, you unleash the beast. This thing sounds absolutely epic. Let me show you. Pretty good, huh? So what do you think guys? Could we do it? Could we make this ugly duckling into a swan once again? Should we do it? Or should we just enjoy it like this and save all the bother? And then finally, if we did do it, how much do you think it would cost to transform this into something pristine once again? Now, don't forget, stranger things have happened. We've had abandoned 250 GTOs sat in the field for years rescued, restored, and now worth over 50 million pounds. So stranger things have happened in the Ferrari world before. Anyway guys, love to know your thoughts on this one. Don't forget you can check out what I get up to on a daily basis over on my socials. Smash the like button, subscribe to the channel if you're not already, and I will see you all in the next one. Ciao for now.